Good evening and welcome to Holy Trinity Church. Uh, uh, Greg will be taking uh, leading service today. Just, I thought, a couple of announcements. Uh, just to say that if you are idle to stay briefly after the service, um, we will have a little glass of something uh, to celebrate Joe uh, being, being made leader uh, last week uh, in the cathedral. And the second thing is, um, I'm sure uh, many of you have heard of it, that um, it seems highly likely that uh, from the 25th of, of July, uh, many of the social distance and other regulations will be um, will not happen anymore. Uh, so, I, but it will be down to each church uh, to decide rules for themselves uh, about the peace and coffee and all sorts of things. Uh, so, if you have any views on that, the PCC will need to meet to. Uh, to decide about this. Let me or uh, one of the church wardens, let me or Joe or some, uh, know afterwards and we'll feed your views uh, into uh, certain, into the discussion. What we can say, I think with some degree of certainty, is that we will be sitting on the 25th. Thank you. Our service begins with the singing of our first hymn by the choir of Jordan's Bank Baptist Choir. Would you please be seated? Bless the Lord, all people on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. 
O people of God, bless the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you who are the right spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says, This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St John says, If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. So in a moment of silent reflection, we call to mind our sins and prepare to confess them before our Heavenly Father. We say together, Father in heaven, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate thoughts, we, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are, are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the glory together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, and the Son of the Father, Lord God, man of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you will know the mother of God, you will know the mother of God, you will know the mother of God, most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We call it for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for our first two readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of the prophet Amos, chapter 7, beginning to read in verse 7. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, 
and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Then answered Amos, and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdman, and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of his trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained our inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to say again antiphonally a song of death. Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. You, you are, are exalted Lord. as head of all. Blessed are you, God of Israel, for ever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom of God, and you are exalted as head of all. Riches and honour come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. You are the sword to the Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, 
beginning at the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 14. King Herod heard of the healing of the sick, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask of me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about this, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Now, whilst it strikes me as strange, not to mention deeply ironic, 
that an organisation committed to healing has as its patron saint someone who have their head permanently separated from their body, further reflection proclaims that in doing the healing work of God, they are embodying the healing word of God, and are thus, like their patron, deeply prophetic, evangelical, and hugely courageous. John the Baptist is, in a sense, the last of the great Old Testament prophets who overlapped into the New Testament and therefore linked both Old and New Testaments together. Prophets have to be courageous because invariably they are calling people to repentance and more often than not find themselves speaking God's truth as they perceive and have received it, often through the medium of dreams or visions, to some very, very powerful people indeed. An example of one of John's Old Testament predecessors at work is to be found in our first lesson in the person of Amos. Amos is one of those prophets preaching just before Israel is taken into exile in Babylon. Since the death of Solomon back in 933 BC, the Holy Land had been divided into two kingdoms, Israel in the north, whose capital city was Samaria, and Judah in the south, whose capital city was Jerusalem. Although from the southern kingdom, Amos felt called to work in the northern kingdom. True to form, Amos has had some visions. The passage we heard this, this evening begins with a third of these, the other two being locusts eating the fully grown grass of the land and fire burning the land. The vision we heard concerns 40 buildings and a plumb line which shows just how 40 they are. Their meaning is clear. A catastrophe looms unless the whole of Israel, including the king and the members of his household, repent of its socially divisive policies and changes its ways forthwith. The response of the high priest, whose power base is clearly being threatened, is perhaps, unsurprisingly, to tell Amos to go back to where he came from and to preach his message of doom and gloom there. But because Amos firmly believes he is proclaiming the word of God, he stands his ground and refuses to budge. Israel refuses in its turn to heed Amos's dire words of warning and is destroyed by the Assyrians in 71 BC. The southern kingdom of Judah is taken into exile into Babylon roughly 200 years later. Well, just as Amos stands his ground, so too does John the Baptist. Our Gospel reading, which seems to read like an extract from a Shakespearean tragedy, is interesting in that the events of John the Baptist's arrest and death are told retrospectively. When our Gospel passage begins, John has already been executed. Herod is clearly a worried man. Having found John fascinating but nonetheless an irritation, he has someone else to worry about now, even greater an irritation than John the Baptist, namely our Lord and Saviour, Jesus of Nazareth. Possibly because he was suffering from having killed someone that didn't deserve death, he believes that John has risen from the dead, maybe even come back to haunt him in the person of Jesus Christ. By all accounts, Herod is a strange man from an even stranger family, which is rife with all kinds of inappropriate sexual liaisons as well as with murder. Herod's own inappropriate relationship with his own brother Philip's wife 
is what John courageously challenges Herod about, and which was what led to his imprisonment in the first place. Incarceration for John must have been a real trial in itself, as he was a man who relished the freedom of living and working outside. Herod's relationship with John was strange in and of itself, as he enjoyed talking with him and listening to what he had to say. Herod's cowardice is in stark contrast to John's courage. When having experienced and succumbed to the lascivious, the lascivious dancing of Salome, his wife's daughter, having rashly offered her anything up to half his kingdom, when having consulted with her mother, she asked for the head of John the Baptist, rather than lose face in front of his friends, he ordered his execution. Herod is indeed a troubled man. Gospel values stand in stark relief when put alongside the values that the world seems to hold dear. In today's epistle from Ephesians, Paul, who like John in the fullness of time, will be executed for the message that he preached, is convinced that not just prophets, but all the chosen people of God are called by God to live Christ-like lives, challenging injustice wherever it occurs. Furthermore, they have been called to this task not just before they were born, but before the world itself was even created. That, of course, includes you and me. That's quite a thought, isn't it? Well, we're not expected to do this in our own strength alone, but empowered by God's Holy Spirit, as through Christ's death on the cross, God has adopted us as his own daughters and son. Every one of us he has adopted as either his sons or his daughters. So what we say must be underlined by the way that we act in the context in which we find ourselves. Central to today's epistle is the idea of God making known to those who would follow him the mystery of his will. Now the thing about mystery is that it can never be fully known, sometimes never fully known this side of earthly death. And as Paul famously put it in that wonderful hymn of love of 1 Corinthians 13, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. The most perfect revelation of God's mystery to date has come in the life, death and resurrection of God's own Son. But it will continue to be seen when injustice is challenged and division healed. Make no mistake, this is no quick fix, but will take lifetimes of faithful witness. Just as our Lord prayed for the Church to be one, so must we. For if a divided church proclaims unity through love, yet remains divided, what hope have we got? As I draw my thoughts to a conclusion this evening, let me challenge you. Have you, have I, got the courage and strength to follow in the footsteps of Amos, John, Paul, and faithful Christians who have lived before us, and God willing, will live after us. Again, this sounds like a very tall order indeed. But I draw strength from those like hospitalers, both from their challenging of injustice and their healing of wounds. It was not so much their words, but their actions, often when they were under fire and in great danger themselves, that they courageously proclaimed the good news of the God of love. At the end of the day, we can only do our best. But we do so in line and by our belief 
in our Lord Jesus Christ, who, let us never forget, has already overcome death itself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Six in our service booklets, we stand to confirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, the Lord that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he became a man of heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will not come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers. Let us pray. God of all power, love, and faithfulness. As we reflect on our readings this evening, hear our prayer. Lord, words and actions have consequences. They can hurt or heal, build up or break. Herod's rash words and subsequent actions had dire consequences. We pray for all people today whose words and actions had led to negative results. We pray for those who have succumbed to peer pressure, all who have been pressurised into doing wrong and find themselves living with the consequences. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for people of all ages trapped in toxic relationships, for victims of abuse, for the lonely and the elderly in our communities, all those whose vulnerability is exploited by the actions of others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the government and all those in power arguing about the timing and lifting of the COVID restrictions. We pray for all Christians in Parliament, for ambassadors, for peacemakers everywhere. May they speak your truths and be heard. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for Afghanistan as troops prepare to leave. We pray for the young people in Israel. And we pray for the young people in Nigeria, where the number of student kidnappings keeps rising. Bring them safely home. We pray for your own, our own children schooling at this time, interrupted as it is by the COVID rules. Father, protect the futures of the innocent. Guide them in all that they do. 
Lord, in your mercy. At the beginning of this month, we saw the marking of the anniversary of our National Health Service. We pray for all their staff, that more doctors and nurses can be recruited as many leave due to the demanding workloads and exhausting toll of the pandemic. We pray for the sick, the exhausted, and the bereaved. In particular, this evening we pray for Tony Morrish and his son, who has tested positive for COVID-19. And we pray for Elizabeth and Rodney. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the church, that it will stand and act upon your word without compromise. We pray for all who minister and lead us, for all who you call to speak out, that we, your people, will, like Amos, listen, hear and respond in the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray you will strengthen, guide, and guard. Merciful Father, I accept your prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. You stand for the peace. God is love, and those who love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a socially distant sign of peace.
and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect, we lift up our voices to join in the triumphant song of praise, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of the power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ has risen. Christ, Christ will come again. You are the Saviour of the world. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Catherine, St. Boniface, and all the blessed saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour himself hath taught us. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Love, you, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
we do not persevere. To come to this your mercy, trusting, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold greatness. We are not worthy really so much to gather up the crumbs under your table, but, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to do the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed to his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us.
Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, all to the Christ of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to the glory everlasting. Would you please be seated? May I start by welcoming everybody this evening and can I draw your attention to a couple of things in our weekly notes. Uh, firstly, um, our APCM, can you please note that um, and as many people as possible um, can come to that, will be held in church in person on the 18th. You will also note that the old church services are starting at the end of the month um, at 8 o'clock um, at the 11th century church down in Home Church. Also on the pew sheet, there's a thank you from me and I would sincerely like to thank everybody who has supported me through my training and I felt them all with me at the cathedral last week. Um, thank you very much. And please stay and have some refreshment um, after the service. Next Sunday at 9.30 we have a service of Holy Communion. Thank you very much. The choir singing our final hymn, which is Through the Night Popped Out of the Sun.
the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.